Hey, what's going on guys? It is Dan Kruger from DK Fitness. We help people achieve their fitness and weight loss goals in a fun and sustainable way through optimized nutrition coaching and custom meal plans. And today I'm going to be walking you through the uh, results page from the InBody 570 Body Composition Analyzer. Now this is a great resource that DK Fitness clients have access to. We recommend our clients do it about every six weeks or so. The main thing that we want to focus on at DK Fitness is the stuff that really matters. So instead of trying to gauge our clients' results by just looking at the number on the scale, we try to evaluate their overall fitness level and general health. And looking at the data provided from this report is very valuable. So let's go through it. So at the very top, we've got the body composition analysis, which is basically a high level breakdown of your weight into a few different categories. So in this section, we've got things broken down by uh, intracellular and extracellular water, so basically all the water, um, and dry mass, which is your bones, and body fat. But basically what you can see is that the very, uh, the vast majority of your weight is going to be water for any given person. So the uh, uh, section below that is the muscle fat analysis. And this is, um, designed so that it suggests normal ranges based on your gender, age, and height. So we can see here on Liz's uh, uh, report, I'm just gonna throw her on blast here, she's got 129.8. The box right below that is skeletal muscle mass. And um, again, this is gonna suggest what normal ranges are for uh, your for your stats. And as you can see, Liz has got 63.3 pounds of muscle on her, so she's actually more than half muscle. Uh, so basically, she's got a lot more muscle than most women of her age do, and that's fantastic. And right below that, you've got body fat mass. So this is the uh, body fat on your body uh, in pounds. So this isn't a percent on this on this section, this is total pounds of fat. So she's got 18 pounds of fat, 63.3 pounds of muscle, and her total weight is 129.8. Now we go down uh, to the next spot and we've got the obesity analysis. Um, the first metric on here I do not like at all. I don't suggest anyone really uses it. Unfortunately, government agencies and insurance companies still look at this but it's the good old BMI. What the BMI does is it just looks at your height and your weight and says you're either overweight or underweight or obese, right? It does not take into account uh, muscle at all. So as you can see, the BMI, Liz is at the uh, very higher end of normal. Um, that doesn't really matter because she's in great shape. As we keep going through this report, you'll see she's very fit and at very low risk for disease. But as far as her BMI is concerned, because she has a lot of muscle tissue on her, it shows that she is on the higher end of normal. So disregard the BMI, I never like talking about it. It's something that was developed, it's a metric that was developed a long time ago before um, people worked out as much as they did and the muscle tissue just wasn't really a factor. So these days it's just an obsolete metric. But right below that we've got a really great metric which is body fat percentage and you'll hear people talking about this all the time and it's a great rule of thumb to just try to figure out um, how fit are you. Uh, generally speaking, uh, for a woman, if you are in the 20s, you're, uh, you're, you're good, you're, you're, you're pretty normal. Uh, if you go below 20, you're getting into that kind of athletic range and you're very fit. And if you're where Liz is at 13.9, you're, you're really, really lean, not the average woman uh, at her age. But she's been working really hard, so that makes sense. Um, but yeah, if you're a woman and you're in the 20s, that's pretty normal. I wouldn't say that's uh, unhealthy. And then if we go to the next section below that, we've got the segmental lean analysis. And this basically breaks down your body into different segments and says uh, how much muscle is on each section. So you can see uh, your right arm and left arm. You know, if there's a disparity there, if one arm is uh, more developed than the other, which most people have a little bit of uh, disparity just because they tend to favor one side or the other, but it shows you where you're carrying all your muscle. And it might be a great indicator of uh, where you need to put more of your uh, uh, training emphasis if you're underdeveloped in certain areas. Um, so we can see on Liz's report here, she's pretty even across the board here. Um, she's got um, you know about six pounds of muscle in each arm. She's got about 49.9 pounds of muscle in her trunk. And basically your trunk is the area from your neck uh, down to your leg. So it's this whole midsection excluding the arms. And then we can see the legs broken down as well. Um, so this might be a good thing for people to take a peek at uh, if there's a, a disparity between um, how strong they are on one side or the other. And right below that we've got the ECW slash TBW 
analysis. And that's basically just a, uh, uh, a look at your water retention uh, overall. And the number itself isn't really all that important. What we really want to look at is below normal, normal, or above normal. Uh, by those little arrow arrows at the top of the chart. And what this uh, section would, would show us is if there's excessive water retention, that would be an indicator of uh, inflammation or infection or something, or maybe your cell walls are not holding water effectively. So usually if you're retaining more water than normal per the chart, it's worth looking at uh, whether or not you have some sort of inflammation going on. And then below that, we've got the body composition history. So you get to see a chart of your weight, your muscle mass, your body fat percentage, and your water retention. As you keep taking this report, you can see how those, those values change over time. Now, if we bump over to the right, um, we've got the segmental fat analysis. And this kind of does the same thing as the segmental lean analysis, but instead of looking how much muscle you have in different areas of your body, it looks at how much fat you have in different areas of your body. Um, so we can see that Liz uh, has very little fat on her arms, which is pretty obvious. We've all seen what her, uh, her shoulders look like, very defined. She gets compliments on the arms all the time. And that's not necessarily because she trains them a bunch or does a bunch of resistance training on her arms. It's just the fact that she happens to not store much fat there. So you can see a lot of detail um, and she just looks fit. Um, she's got uh, the majority of her body fat stored in her trunk, which is pretty normal between your neck uh, and your legs. And then um, a, a, an average amount of body fat stored in her legs. That's just pretty typical for, for women. Right below that, you've got something called the basal metabolic rate. And that is a caloric value um, based on your, your height and your weight and your uh, um, uh, muscle. And that basically says how many calories uh, do you theoretically burn while just resting for the day, like laying around the house, not really doing anything? Um, and we can see Liz is at about four, uh, 1,400 here, almost 1,500. And if she does any kind of activity, if she's out running errands, if she's working out, um, that number comes up and there would need to be more food there to support her, um, her body weight. Right below that, we've got visceral fat. And this is the fat, um, in your uh, midsection here around your vital organs and it's not necessarily fat you can always see sometimes it's pretty deep in there around organs and uh, very fit looking people could have a very very high visceral fat level and the reason this is important is because that's a very strong indicator of risk for chronic diseases and problems um, so the metric used here is 10 is right in the middle uh, values below 10 are fine. There's no risk there. You don't have excessive amounts of visceral fat. If you're at 10, um, kind of middle of the road, but that's kind of that threshold where we start to say, okay, maybe we should start looking at uh, reducing your body fat for the purpose of reducing risk of diseases. And those diseases would include heart disease and diabetes and things like that. So that's the report in a nutshell. Like I said, we like to have our clients do this about every six weeks or so, and it's a great way to uh, figure out how they're progressing because sometimes the scale might not be moving that much, but if you're adding muscle and losing fat at the same time, which is fantastic, the scale might not be giving you the credit you deserve. It might say you dropped a pound or gained a pound or didn't change anything, but in reality, your body composition is changing, you're getting better looking, you're feeling better, you're healthier. So all this great stuff could be happening, and a lot of times the scale just does not communicate that effectively. So we love to use this as a metric. If you guys have any questions about this or want to hop on and do a body fat analysis, uh, shoot me a message, dkruger at dkrugerfit.com, and we will get you started right away. I'll see you guys in the next video.